Hi, this is Anne, and I'm going to show you how I did the background um, color for this piece that I did stitching on, and you can find that video in the links. What you're going to need for this project, what I used is Neo Color 2 wax pastels, water soluble wax pastels, and I used the 15 count box because I wanted two different greens. You'll also need a mist bottle or a spray water bottle and some paper towel for any messes and some kind of background fabric. This is just some of my hand painted fabric that I'll be using. You'll need a piece of parchment paper that is double the size of your fabric so that you can slip your fabric in between the layers and press it. Some kind of surface, and this is a glary, sorry. I have a surface that's waterproof that won't be damaged if I get the crayons and the water on it, the wax pastels and the water, an ironing surface and a dry hot iron. So we'll begin by putting our fabric down and they're going to decide which side is better. Before I start, let me show you a few examples. Other examples that aren't stitched yet. And the difference in these really is just the amount of water that is used. The water can change the wax pastel. And you can do wa this wax pastel without any water also, but since I'm working on fabric, I like to get it uh, moist and, and then it works better for me. So I'll take my piece of fabric and I'll spritz some water, miss some water on it. I don't want it puddly, but I want it damp. And you will see how that lets the fabric take the wax pastels really easily. And I'll start by just doing a little oval in the yellow. But of course, these are colors you could use any color that you want. And then I'm just going to put a little orange around it. And I'll start with my, I'm going to get this a little more damp. And when it's that wet, you don't have to hardly touch with the, the uh, wax pastel. It takes The fabric takes the color really well. And then I just, again, with the oval, it's really simple. You don't have to have any drawing skill or painting skill, just some ovals to give the flower a little bit of a depth, a little more dimension. I might make them the petals larger on one side, smaller on the what would be the back side or the away from me side. And if you're on something that's textured, this will take the texture. So um, think about that. With flowers, I think that would be cool. Then I'm just going to put a little pink off to one side of these just to make it a little more interesting, having a little more color. And then I'm going to take my red, and I, I want it at each flower petal, but because when I go to stitch this, since that's what I'm going to do with it, I know that my thread's going to go in between there, so I'll take a little bit of color and go around the edge of the yellow because I know that that will have stitching at some point. I'm going to give this a little more purple. Now I'm going to take my green and just pull a line down, a stem down, pull it up, up. Do this any way that you want with as many as you want. And if you get a little pastel on here, it may smudge, then you just decide to put another flower on there. It's no problem. And I'm just going to add a little bit of leaves to my, my stems any old way you want. It's really simple. Then I'm going to take my other green. First I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Take my other green and lay it right on the other, the original green. Now at this point I can call this, well actually let me do a little, little bit of brown specks in the top of the flower seeds, sort of. That's 
makes it a little more interesting. I can leave it like this or I can spritz it with some more water. And I'll do the spritzing down here and you can see what happens with the stem as it just bleeds out. And the more you do that, the more it will bleed out. Depends on if you want a definite line for when you're stitching. I'll show you this, the stitched one again. And you can see that the flower behind it is pretty blurred. There wasn't a lot of definition. And that was the way I wanted it. But you can certainly leave more definition. So if I spritz, spritz this more with the water, it would, it would bleed out. And that may be the effect of you like. It gives some neat, looks like there's more flowers maybe behind it. So now I'm going to let this completely dry. And then we'll come back and press it. So now I'm, now I'm back on my ironing surface and I have my parchment paper down. This isn't completely dry, but it's dry enough for this. This will finish drying it. So this is a little heat setting. So that when I go to stitch it, the wax pastel will stay where it's supposed to stay. Just give that a little bit. I'm going to slide it down here so that I don't transfer any of that. I'm just going to give a little bit more. There we go. And you can see how where I spritzed more water, it, it blurred it a little bit more. And then that piece is ready. My next step would be to take my backing fabric and put my batting on it. Or I would spray baste. I would spray baste onto the backing fabric. I won't do this in here. I would do that in a better ventilated place. And then I'll put the batting, thin batting down in the center of that. And I'll put my piece, uh, spray baste on that. And then I'll put my piece on top. Don't want to spray baste onto the actual top piece. It's better to do it on the, the batting or whatever is below it. And then that's ready to go to my sewing machine and stitch, which you'll see in the other video if you'd like to see how I stitched this. This is Ann. Thanks for watching.